Let's see. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with this. We had a question, and I'm going to try my best to answer the question. I'm recording this, Tracy, so you can always go back and look at it, okay? But let's go, let's go ahead and open up with a prayer. Ab Yahuwah, we thank you as always, Father, for all things. We thank you for keeping us safe, Father, as you punish this earth for its wickedness. We thank you, Father, that you've given us everything that we need to obtain salvation. We thank you, Father, for all things. We thank you for your love and your kindness. Of course, Father, we always, we bless the name of Yahuwah. We praise and magnify the name of Yahuwah. But Father, we have to ask you, please forgive us for our, all of our wickedness, sins, transgressions, and iniquity. And if we have any, Father, we ask that you take this away from us. We ask, Father, that you cleanse us and you keep us clean and pure so we can walk in your way. And if there's anything, Father, that we're not doing that's not conducive to your love, Father, please show it to us so that we can correct ourselves. We thank you, Father, for all things. We praise your name. Of course, Father, always thank you for the Ruach HaKodesh that leads us and guides us into all truth and shows us how to keep our foot on the straight and narrow path. And of course, Father, with, without saying, we thank you for Yahushua HaMashiach, the one and only, the, 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 the everlasting one that you sent to atone for our sins. So we thank you, Father, for all things in Yahushua's name. We pray and we ask you, Father, please hear us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and get to this thing now. I'm going to show you. His question was, he was talking about why was the Mashiach born in Bethlehem? Is that what it was, Tracy? Right. He, and Bethlehem belonged to Ephraim. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Now, where you, where you, now, what scripture you said you had just saying that that was uh, you going back to Deuteronomy when he when he gave them their land or what, where, where you? Well, yeah, from when when Moses when Moses gave them gave them the city. So and I that think that's Deuteronomy. It's either going to be Deuteronomy fourteen. And it might be 16. Hold on a minute. Let's look at this real quick. Okay, you either, can you, well, you can't see the screen, but everybody else, you can see the screen, right? Yeah. Let me make sure I got this sound. I'm going to put the sound on. Yeah, I know how I do. And then we'll get it, we'll go ahead and get into that. You are the children of Yahuwah, your Elohim. You shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead, okay? And uh, for thou art and uh, set apart people unto Yahuwah thy Elohim. Are you at you at Deuteronomy 14? Tracy? Yeah. Yep, let me get there. My iPad is real slow tonight. Okay, uh, okay. Well, you got some time you got to turn pages, baby. Yeah, I know. You know, that's how we grew up. Yeah, I know. Let's see. Uh, okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's going to be. Okay, I'm going to come down here because this is where uh, he starts talking about Ephraim. Now, I'm going to show you something else on this here, too, another way that you can do it. But because um, I'm going to do a class on these these different sites. Huh? I know he's not up here. I got it. Okay, you got Deuteronomy, Tracy? Yeah, I'm at, uh, I'm at Deuteronomy. 14. No, I'm, I'm getting there, scrolling up. I'm going to show you how Yahoo is always right and exact. Okay. Always. Go down to 27. Yes. Because he starts talking about the different ways and thou shalt throw that money and whatever thou sold lust is after. He's talking about the feast for yep. sheep, and wine, or living in your town. Right, or strong drink. So when people be like, oh, man, listen, man, it's in, it's in the scriptures. But now watch this, in 27, and the Levite that is within thy gate, thou shalt not forsake him, for he have no part nor inheritance with thee. So, because Yahuwah was their inheritance. 
in the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all thine uh, of the tithe and thine increase the same year and shall lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he has no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied, that Yahuwah thy Elohim may bless thee in all the work of thine hand which thou doest. Okay, let's go over to 15. And the end of every seven years thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called Yahuwah's release. So we, so we see that's another reason uh, and we're dealing with this because uh, this we're not supposed to have usury credit cards and all that. That's all this is all Hasatan system. Let's see, let's yeah, go down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's see, hold on a minute. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna try just try to turn over to 16. They got to be 16. Let's see. Okay, hey, there goes Sister Kim, y'all. Hey, okay. Kim. Hi, Kim. But she's, I let her in. Anyway, Deuteronomy 16, 11, observe the month of a bib, keep the Passover until Yahuwah thy Elohim from the month of a bib. Yahuwah thy Elohim brought thee out of the land of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto Yahuwah thy Elohim of the flock and the herd in the place which Yahuwah shall choose to place his name there. This is very important. Now watch this. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread, but hold on, that's not what I want. No. Uh, hold on. Ah, uh, let's see, Feast of Tabernacles, uh, bread, it might be 35, hold on a minute, uh, let, me, let me try to do it around the 35, if it is a 35, let's see, okay, okay, here we go, and Moshe went up, from the plains of Moab into the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah that is over against Jericho and Yahuwah showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan. So he saw all this land and of Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and all the land of Judah into the most part of the sea. So you see he named these together, right? Okay, now what's this? Is, now, I don't know what's going on here, but my, my Bible says that this is yeah, 34. That's what I, yeah, 34, because it only took me, I, I thought it was 35, but it's 34 chapters. But 34 okay. and 2, 34 and 2. Okay. And Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and all the land of Judah. Now, you see how he put these, he put these, all he put these together. That's what I mean. Yeah. Even though we know it's Ephraim, still, he put, he put them, in, you see what I'm saying? Ephraim and Manasseh and the land of Judah, yeah. saying all these together. Now, Let's go look at this. Now, the first place, let's let's go look to Genesis. I think it's in Genesis uh, chapter, let me see. I think it's, ah, I'm trying to think, but you know, we can do it like this to find it because Rachel, uh, one of the patriarch's wife was buried there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's why it was given to, to yeah. that's why it was given to Ephraim. Okay, hold on, Genesis 35. Because Rachel died in Bethlehem. Okay, so Genesis 35, and let me see. Uh, Bethel. Okay, okay, here we go. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephratah, which is Bethlehem, right? So yep. let's let's go see what Bethlehem means. Okay, so the Bethlehem means what? House of bread. It's a city in Judah, birthplace of David, a place of Zebulun. Okay, so this is the house okay. of bread. Now we got to look at something else because we know if it's the house of bread, we know that the Mashiach is the bread of life, right? And we see that this actual, this so, so he wasn't, I don't know what you were saying about he was born. Bethlehem is in Judah. It's not yes, far yes, from- Bethlehem is in Judah, but if that's the case, if he was born in Bethlehem, why isn't he not an Ephraimite? Okay, I'm gonna because it's it's Judah. I mean Bethlehem is Ju Judah. I mean it's not right. far from. But listen, listen to me. Listen, I'm finna, I'm finna ask you a question. I'm gonna show you why he was born there. Okay, okay. 
So the first, the next, I wish he was up here because then you would get a better understanding of this. Now let's go, we see that. It's, it's, so it's the birthplace of King David, which we know that he came through the lineage of David. And then we see Zebulon, right? So let's go, okay, now where's the first place the Mashiach went when he started his ministry? Okay, let's go to John. Go to John chapter one. This was, y'all don't do nothing by mistake, man. Everything he does is planned and it's precise. Oh, planned and it's in order. Okay. So we see that John 1 and 29, when he says, the next day, John see if Yahushua coming unto him and said, behold, the lamb of Elohim, which take away the sin of the world, right? So, so we already see that he's calling him um, the uh, lamb of Elohim. Now let's do this here. Okay, let's go. Let's put in here Gentiles. You say, why are you putting that in there? I'm going to show you why. Let's go down here to, because we see in Isaiah, um, it's going, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, and we're going to get back to that because I want to show you this thing here because it's already, all this stuff was already prophesied, but I want to show you the first place he went when he, when because we just seen the names, Matthew 14 and 15. Okay, what's it saying? It says, and leaving Nazareth, this is Matthew 14 and 13. Uh, actually, start, go up to, start at verse 12. Now, when Yahushua had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast and the borders of what? Zebulon and Natalim. We just got done reading that. Mm -hmm. You see that? Now, the, yep. next, the next thing we got to try to find out is, let's go up here and do this. It's a word called migdal. It's in Hebrew. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Eater. Let's go search that out. Okay, so migdal eaters. So they're going to give us a whole lot of stuff. So, but what does it mean? Migdal Eater is a tower. It's a, it's a high, strong tower mentioned in biblical book of Genesis 35 and 21. In the context death of Jacob's wife, Rachel, the biblical record locates it near the present day city of what? Bethlehem. So Rachel died and she was buried on the way to Ephratah. That is Bethlehem, right? Because he gonna, we're going to read in a few minutes that he said, out of Bethlehem, Ephratah, you're going to get this king. And Jacob set up a pillar at her grave. Okay, that's not what we want. Let's see. Because what, what, now that Mig, Migdal Eber, okay, here we go, right here. Yeah, Migdal Eber. Right, remember I was telling you about what that meant, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go look. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is just something saying the Lamb of God. But see, this is where they went to go get the lambs from. And they would wrap the, the newborn lamb. They would wrap him in, a, in, a, uh, in swaddling. They would wrap him. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to find this way. It's going to break that down for you. Uh, uh, let me see. see. Okay, let's, let's look at this. In the Bible, we find several other names for Bethlehem, including Ephratah. Michael, we're going to look at that. Ephratah, Genesis, and all this. It should be noted that Ephratah or Ephratah was an ancient name for the area which was later called Bethlehem. Ephratah means ash heap and place of fruitfulness. See, so here's another definition for it. And it seems to revert to Isaiah 61 and 3, which means, uh, mentions beauty for ashes. It is also widely known that the word Bethlehem means house of bread. We know that already. This is too, maybe reference to Yahushua as he started doing the cedar. Okay, we don't, we don't care. That's that foolishness. His disciple, okay, but hold on a minute. I'm trying to find, it's going to tell you exactly what that, what it is, but it's, I'm telling you, it's a place where they, um, uh, where they, um, where they, that's where they went to go get the Passover lambs from. And they would, and they would wrap these lambs in the swaddling, right? Now, what did they do? Let me see. What did they do uh, when the Mashiach was in his manger? Um, I love him. They what? They put him in swaddling clothes. Exactly. Just like they did the, reg the original lamb. So here he is. Yep. He's the lamb of Elohim. And they go to Bethlehem to get this lamb. 
and he's the firstborn. I mean, are you starting to get it now? You starting to see why they had to go to Bethlehem? Yes. Because it was a, it was a tower. It was a strong tower. It was a place of fruitfulness. It's the house of bread. All of that points toward the Mashiach. So we know that when the Mashiach went and got the coat, and uh, because what they would do when they got this lamb from from Bethlehem, they had him swaddled up. They would they would you know take care of him, bring him when they got back to when they got to Bethlehem. I mean when they when they got to Jerusalem. They would open that gate, and then the lamb, the Passover lamb for the whole nation, would come through that gate, and the people would go crazy. You see what I'm saying? Because they knew what the Passover meant. But instead, who came through the gate? The Mashiach. In other words, the the true lamb of Elohim came through the gate, and that was a way of him showing them, "I'm here." to be the Passover lamb for you, for those that understood. See, let me see. Okay, let's, let's look at this right here. You're gonna be able to see all this stuff. Let's see. Uh, I did a class on this a long time ago. Let's see. Uh, let's see. But thou be from Ephratah, thou be, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee, Shall the Mashiach come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, who's going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Hold on a minute. So what I'm saying is you can't, I, I, I know you was telling me about this book. Um, yeah. Okay, and then Micah 4 and 8. And these are some of the stuff I already had wrote down because I had Micah, Micah 4 and 8 and Micah 5 and 2. And thou, O tower, of, o tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Until these shall it, it shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom, the Mashiach shall bring the kingdom, shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. So here it is again. Now let's see. So let's see if I can get to it. What about the watchtower? Oh, that's another name for it, the watchtower of the flock. Undoubtedly, this was a military tower used in watch over the valley. Okay, well, I ain't worried about that. Hold on a minute. I'm trying to find. But, but here's, here's where my confusion also comes in. When we talk about the the, the 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 joining of the two sticks prophecy, yeah. okay, it, Ephraim and Judah are going to have to be brought back together to combine to bring back the northern and the southern kingdom back together. I mean, Correct? we yeah, we get that. Okay, so that means somebody is a Judite, and then somebody is an Ephraimite. Well, you you got the house of Israel. Because now you have to go, wait a minute, now we got to go all the way back in history when the kingdom split. You got the house of Israel, right? And you got yeah. the house of Judah. The house of Judah, the house of Judah contained Benjamin, Levi, and Judah. That's what that was the royal house. Right. Then you had the other tribes. So when he brings them back, he's going to gather them all together and put them together because he has to do that because of the anonymity that's between both of them. The hatred goes all the way back to the time of Saul. Remember, they didn't want to come and be up under King David. So they, so remember, they were split. And then later on, they did it again. I mean, they always was fighting back and forth. This is why Paul tells you that he's going, that he's bringing, making it out of the two. He made, he going to make one. We've been taught that he was talking about out of Christianity. No, it's not, ain't got nothing to do with Christianity. It's dealing with the two tribes. Because it was in it was hatred there. So even when they when they started coming back to the temple, they made them have they had to take had to have a ritual that they had to go through to prove that they kept the commandments because they was lost and they was lost like we are right now amongst the nations. They had forgotten everything. So, but the reason why, now let's let's look at this. Now, the watchtower from ancient times was used by the shepherds for protection from their enemies and wild beasts. It was also the place ewes were safely brought to give birth to the lambs. In this shelter building cave, the priests would bring in the ewes which were about to, uh, about to lamb for protection. These special lambs came from a unique flock that was designated for sacrifice at the temple in Jerusalem. So who else can be more designated than the Mashiach? Right, I understand. I understand all that, but what I what? Do you see where the confusion comes in? No, you don't. 
Uh-uh. That's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to help you. I mean, I'm trying to see what you're saying, because you're saying that by him being born in Judah, that he should be an Ephraimite? No, he was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem so, is right. So, Beth why, so if that's the case, if he's born in Bethlehem, which is the truth, he would have to be. Why would why would we, why would the most high have him be born in Bethlehem because of the well, he was born, the, Beth, the sacrifice for the 12 tribes? Well, remember, Bethlehem is in Judah. Okay. Okay, we just yes. looked at that. And Bethlehem is in Judah. So he so not only was he born in Judah, and then he ain't far from they call him, they call him the, the Nazarite, right? Yeah. And we know what Nazarite means. So, you, I mean, this is what you got to understand. It, you know, I don't know. I mean, again, whatever you read and they, you know, they, that's why I say it. And I'm not picking on nobody. I'm just saying it's, that's why we have to go through these. No, it's not whatever I'm reading. Okay. Well, it's, I mean, I'm just saying. There's, 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 Ephraim, there's reasoning, but like you said, there's a plan and there's a reasoning for everything. And the thing is that I don't, where I, where I, I get the confusion is. Why would the most yes, like I said before? Okay, do you, do you have your blue letter Bible? Yeah, right here. Okay, go go ahead and punch in Bethlehem. What was the original question? He's trying to find. He's saying that if if he's thinking that for some reason that Bethlehem was okay, he's saying that it was given to um. It was given to Ephraim, so it would be the land of Ephraim. But it was, what, what, what it is is, is is Bethlehem is a city that's in Judah. In, that's in Judah, yes. right? So and he and he was from the tribe of what? Judah. Judah, and he went. Okay. He was born in Bethlehem, just like they did the the lambs. He, they they let they wrapped the baby lambs in swaddling. He was wrapped in swaddling. Every okay. step of this thing is exactly alike. So by him being the ultimate sacrifice, he had to be born there because that's okay. where they went to get the Passover land. So, okay. so, so, then, so there's no confusion then that there is no lineage with the Messiah being any from act. No, how, how can he okay. be? He, he's, well, a, he, the confusing part is if, if listen, if, I, if, if I'm born in, in, in Buffalo, Right. Okay. That makes me a Buffalonian. Okay. Yeah. But at the same time, Buffalo was in New York. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I mean, I see, I see what you're saying, but Judah had nothing to do with Ephraim. That's two different houses. No, that's where the confusion. That's where I got where it came a confusion for. Uh, uh, okay. Why would the Most High have him? And I understand why, since the way you've explained it, okay? Because he is the lamb, okay? The the lamb for the 12 tribes. Okay? Right, right. And, and I understand that, all right? Now let's go to, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. So if that's the case, okay, the prophecy says, because right now, we are not, we are not one again. We are not. We're still separated. The, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Okay. Okay. So if that's the case, there has to be someone. And is it the is it the Messiah? Is the the one to bring the the twelve tribes back together to reunite Ephraim? I mean, he, he, he's he, he's yeah, he's telling us all through uh, all through. Uh, through the prophets, he's gonna gather them. He said, "I and I, I'm gonna gather them. I'm gonna bring you back." He's gonna, he's gonna, yeah, he's the one. He's the key to everything. Okay. Okay. Without him, huh? I was gonna say, but that's not gonna happen oh, until on, he on, comes hold on, back. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Mama. Go ahead, say that again now. Me? Yeah. Doesn't prophecy say that Joseph is going to uh, that Joseph is going to gather the northern tribes and then the Messiah 
is going to bring those two southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. I ain't never read that before. I mean, if you know where it's at, if you know where that's at. No, let's go to Genesis chapter 49, man. And then we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 7. Okay, we're going to go to Genesis 49. Yeah, let's go there. Let's go to Genesis chapter 49. Let's read this here. Start at verse 1. Let me know when you get there. Okay, Genesis 49. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, verse 1, and Jacob called unto his sons yeah. and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last day. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Because why is he giving them all that? Because he is the firstborn. The firstborn gets all that, right? But we know, but down here he's gonna tell them why he's not gonna get it. Because I'm because you gotta because you gotta understand how Ephraim got all this. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. Then the father said, he went up to thy couch. Then we know Simeon and Levi. And Levi, our brethren, instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. Why would he say that? Because of what they did when they when them, when them, when them uh, Hamites got with, with their sister Dinah. What did they do? And they, they, they went in there and killed them, everybody. Circumcised yeah. them. First, they all used the covenant to commit murder. So he said, oh, my soul, come thou into thy secret and their assembly. Mine honor be not thou united. For in their anger, they slew a man. And in their self-will, they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce. And their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Just like they did Joseph. Because remember, I was telling you earlier today, Joseph and the Mashiach have a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so Judah is a lion's wealth. For the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stood down. He couches as a lion and as an old lion who shall, who shall make him raise up. Now, this is the, this is the key right here. The next couple of ones. Now let's watch this. The scepter, which is the scepter. You know what? What does that mean to you? The scepter. The scepter. Mm -hmm. Is uh, I know what a scepter is. Yes. Who 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 wields that? With the king. Okay. So the scepter shall not depart from Judah. So all the kings is coming out of Judah. We know okay. that the Mashiach is the king of kings, right? Right. Right. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Who gave the law up on Mount Sinai? Moses. Who gave it to him? Oh, the Most High. And who was the Mashiach? Yeah. That that was him in the spirit, right? Okay. Yahuwah Elohim. Because we have Ab Yahuwah the Father, and we have Yahuwah Elohim. From between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Well, now let's now, now let's make sure it's him. No, verse eleven, binding his foal. What 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 kind of uh what 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 kind of animal did he get when he uh when he came through the gate for the Passover? Lions. No, he rode what? What did he ride through the gate? A donkey. What kind of a donkey? Foal of an ass. Okay. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's coat. Unto the choice vine, he washed his. Who's the choice vine? How was he binding himself? Because he binding himself to Israel, who is supposed to be the choice vine, but end up being wild grapes. He washed his garments in wine. He's going to do that later when he comes back and smashes his place. To, right? What's that thing Sonny's always say? Who's that coming from? from He's always say Boraz, but we know it's from Bajra with dyed garments on. That's right. It, right? And his, which is who was dealing with um, Edom and his clothing, the blood of grapes. Because remember, we learned this a couple of weeks ago in the class that he's going to stick that sickle in. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Okay, now let's go to, because this is this is where he, he's telling all the children what they got coming. Every last one of them. Uh -huh. Okay, but we know because of the sins of the elder brothers, 
and Joseph was Joseph, we know that Yah was with Joseph and blessed Joseph. Then when he went to go bless Ephraim and Manasseh, remember how, uh, how the hands were switched? Yeah, and, he, switched and he talked yeah. about Ephraim, right? Yeah. So yeah. now Ephraim was, after that, after the brothers had did all the things they did, Ephraim became the firstborn. That's what I mean, the firstborn, in other words, of the house of Israel, not Judah. Now watch this. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of the progenitors unto the utmost bound of everlasting hill. They shall be on the head of Joseph, on the crown of, of the head of him that was separate from his brother. Now, watch this here. Let's go back up here. Let's go to, uh, to Hebrews chapter 7. Go ahead and turn. Let me know when you get there. Okay. And it's not, and you, and you, not, you don't have no bad questions. I mean, it's a good question. It's a real good question. But what I want you to do, I want you to go up on, on, on our site and I want you to go through the, the, uh, the, the class on the firstborn priesthood. Okay. It's very no. important. And that's going to help you. Okay, Hebrews 7. Yep. We're going to start at 1. Okay. For this male kid's dad, king of Salem, priest of the most high, Elohim, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the son of Elohim, abideth a priest continually. See? Now, consider how great this man was, and to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the temple to spoil. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that he that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessing, blessed of the better. And here men die that receive tithes, but there he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as I may say, say Levi also who received tithes, paid tithes to Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what law? The law of animal sacrifice. What further need was there that another priest should rise out of the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made a necessity to, of change, uh, of change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave for the tenants at the altar. For it is evident that our, our, our sovereign spring out of what? Judah. Of which tribe Moses spake con nothing concerning priesthood. So he's telling you this is where he came, this is the tribe he came out of, and this is, and basically that's, 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 that's it in a nutshell. This is our king. Okay. He, he okay. I mean, he's the lion of Judah, right? Yeah. 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 Now the next thing, no. now go ahead. So, so the confusion <clears throat> part on my part, which I thought was contradictory, was why would it, now I understand, okay? So I don't need to, you know, you don't need to tell me that again. I understand now why he was born in Bethlehem. There was a reason for it. Well, see, that's exactly right. Because, see, a lot of people don't really even know that that's where they got the land from. I mean, every step is always... I mean, hundred percent with y'all. He he always has a reason. Now, sometimes when we run into stuff and it seems like it's something don't make sense, then we always got to go back to the to, to the first part of the book and start tracing it down. So whenever you can get up here, I want you to get up here, um, uh, and so I can show you. I'm I'm gonna do a video on all these different type of search engines and stuff that people can. Because a lot of people, I don't know if you know how to use it or not. But it's a lot of people that don't know how to use it. And without using these tools, man, it's always easy to get thrown off. But the best way to get understanding is you just got to, what I do, I can't tell you what you got to do, but I'm just going to say what I do. When I have a question on something, I cut that stupid TV off. I close myself in this room. You know, you got to pray. And then you got to start doing the research. You got to start looking at maps and doing all these things. 
understand the history, okay? Mm -hmm. So the thing about it is exactly the history, you got you got to know where you come from, you know where you go and how it applies to you. Right. And that's, and that's where I when I got to this part of with Ephraim, Ephraim and Rachel and and the confusion came from, okay, so somebody in here has got to be an Ephraimite for them to be in in Bethlehem. So I'm either thinking it's is it David? Is it Joseph? Is it is it Mary? Okay, who is the Ephraimite for them to be able to come into the city of Bethlehem to be able to 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 birth their child or to birth the Messiah? Yeah, but Bethlehem okay. was in Judah. Right, that's what I'm saying. I understand that. Okay. 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 So I, I and I understand that. Okay, that's not a question. But I'm just saying, where? Okay, what I'm what my question was always has has been. The Most High has hid His people. Okay. Well, Scripture so, says that. You're right. Okay, He has hid His people. So if that's the case, has He hidden someone? out of Ephraim. Of course. You, you got to see, yes. we, we got a class on that. Um, who are the Gentiles? And then we got another class. We got a couple of classes. That's why I told you to go through, go through that uh, firstborn priesthood series, man. That's going to answer all your questions. Even, okay. even awesome. down, because when we looked at, at, at uh, uh, um, uh, Zebulon and Naphtali, you see, that's one of the, I mean, it's always, if you can find it in the front, in, in, in them letters, you, that means if Paul is saying it, that means you got to go to the back and, and you got to do your research to, to walk it down. You understand right. what I'm saying? Plus, you got to realize that 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 when uh, uh, you also got to understand the history of the Assyrian captivity. That's what I was just getting ready to say, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I've understood now with the Assyrian captivity, okay, the Most High warned so the Northern Kingdom left, okay? And when they left, they went from where they were in Morocco, okay, into Africa, which is now the, the majority of the tribe went into Nigeria, which is now Nigeria. Okay, okay, I, okay go ahead. Am, am I wrong? Well, books, he says he's going to scatter them to the four corners of the earth. Moses told well, you that. But, but, but he did, but also, but, but, but that was, that's my first part. So, yes, we were scattered into what is now Nigeria, what is now the Gold Coast, and, and what they concerned or what they were calling Negro land, okay? Yeah. But at, but at the same time... Well, remember, remember, when, they, uh, the, the ones, when you say Negro land, you're talking about the, um, you're talking about the uh, Jews of Spain. Yes. Okay. okay. So, they but, were scattered, but, the Jews of Spain, which are the, which are the Moors scattered into, into mm. the Gold Coast of Africa. Well, the Moors, the, we, we traded with the Moors and we did all these different things, but the Moors also helped us to, to get into the slavery situation because the Moors was trying to save themselves from the queen and uh, and uh, they, helped, they, they helped us end up going to Negro land because what it was, they came up with this tax thing and if you couldn't afford to pay the tax, you couldn't stay in Spain, and they sent you to Negro land. You see right. what I'm saying? Which then after Negro land... I understand that, but here's the thing. See, all more means is black, okay? But at the same time, just like, for instance, when you look at some of the names that spread into Europe that are Moorish descended names, okay? The German name Swartz. That just means black. It just means okay. black, right. And we know that we, right. yeah, go ahead. Okay. And so at the same time, part of the part of the kingdom, okay, there are Moors that that stopped um practicing uh, uh following the following uh the commandments went into um into North America. Okay, but it, uh, but even if but see Moors are Hamites, so if, if if they was keeping the commandments, they started keeping the commandments, they would be strangers. Okay. You, now, you see but, what I'm saying? But not all the Moors were Hamites, is what I'm saying. Some of the some of our people converted to Islam 
to, to so they wouldn't be destroyed. Yeah, like, they did. Well. Yeah, they did that. They did. Some of them did convert to Islam, and then some of them, you know, if they came to your house and they seen you was keeping the Shabbat, they knew what they knew what that was. If you was keeping any feast and they was trying to baptize, they separated the children from the parents. And that's where the word God, the God, mother and Godfather came from, because they was giving the children to these Spanish godmothers and godfathers who was having them baptized. I got and they brainwashed them with that's when that's one of the times when the brainwashing started on us. But, yeah, again. but yes. you gotta remember, he said, I'm gonna scatter them to the four corners of the corners earth. Of the so, so so Ephraim is everywhere. Everywhere. So what I'm saying is the majority, so when you look at the, 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 the North American slave trade, okay, even the South American slave trade, let's just say the Atlantic slave trade, okay, Ephraim was spread from North America all the way to South America, okay? That's what I, the question that I'm having, okay, is if you got a people, when you spread us through the four corners of the earth, we are, our tribes, I should say, then if that's the case, the, the the our people here in North America right now, a small percentage of them would be by blood Judah. Well, then you got to also okay. remember. Wait a minute now. You also got to remember because uh, you had the Babylonian captivity, and you also got to remember that a lot of I Israel was already here. That with the, uh, with the same thing they was talking about the American Indians, they was the first ones to be here, and they took them from here and put them on slave ships and sent them all over the place. So we yeah, always yeah. been scattered and everywhere. Right. And so and that's why we have when our classes, we, we stress that after okay. 2000 years or 1400 years, whatever, that they were scattered. You can't look at nobody and tell who they are. Y'all well, knows well, who they well, are. I know that. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to figure out, you know, uh, who I am from both sides. That's what I, all I'm trying to say. OK, well, Cause I know I know one side of me is Judah. OK. And I know a percentage of me got to be on the other side. It's got to be Ephraim. Well, I mean, I know this much. After after, after Judah, because Judah at first was still in good graces with Yahuwah. Then he sent Babylon, he, then he sent the Babylonians to come and get him. Some of right. us stayed in Babylon. And then some of us end up get, getting put on slave ships, brought here. So uh, it, it's no doubt that Judah is here. Judah is in Canada. Right. Judah is, it's no doubt about yeah. that. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Right but yeah. Ephraim is all over the place. Now, who knows? Right. Right. But they know that you Judah. They, it's, it's not even that's why they do. You know, I was um, when I was talking to somebody else and they was like, well, they're in America. And I'm like, how is you in America? Do you ever watch the news? Do you ever even see that everywhere that like them Haitians that came over here? Uh -huh. OK, we've seen them on the news land in Miami. As soon as they landed, the state troopers and everybody else was there and gathered them. You ain't never heard nothing else that happened to them. No. They ain't never even so when I'm even even over in um this place here, um, Ukraine, the people that of color over there, they don't even they they're treating them like dogs and they don't even want them to flee the country while the war is going on. Right. And so right. this is what I'm saying. So I get what you're saying, but you know, but just for the question you asked me. Was that so? So the Mashiach was born. Uh, he in Judah, and he he is from the tribe of Judah. He is the king. Um, I mean, I yeah, don't know what the, else to the say. Bloodline, the king, the king bloodline is from Judah. Right. Yeah, yes. And then we see, yes. uh, and we also Solomon see. David. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Solomon, David. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, and on up and down the line. Right, okay. but but we also and, see now we understand. Why Bethlehem was so crucial? See, because you know, all they show us all before was just a baby wrapped in swaddling in a manger. Right, right, you you right. never knew why he was wrapped in swaddling. You never knew why he was born in Bethlehem. None of that. Now you right. know. Now you know why. Now I understand. Okay, and it's just like, uh, and, and, but so know this. Okay, so to this day, those people in 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 the Holy Land now. Don't well, we know that. Right? Yeah, that's that's a fact. Right, but the thing is, why haven't they tried to take Bethlehem? Because the Most High ain't gonna let them do it. Well, you got to remember, Judah's gonna take Bethlehem. Judah's yeah. gonna Judah's gonna take Jerusalem, all that back. Right. At the last, and in the end, you know, in the time in when the it, of the Great War, you know. Yeah, yeah, 
because yeah. he parted their lands. So then he's going to come back. Messiah is going to come back and and uh, and straighten everything back out. Right. Sold the sold his children for you know for for a bottle of wine and and you know part of his land. Well, that's well, we did that. We out. we but no, we did that. Israel okay. did that to Israel. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. So okay. you good? You good now? I'm good now. I'm good now. It's straightened out now. Okay, I'm gonna get with you maybe uh, in the morning or something and see if you wanna see I can so I can get you up here so you can start coming to these classes, man. Okay. Go, let me get caught up now. What do you want me to switch? Oh, which, uh, you're going to go to the firstborn priest. I, I'll, I'll text it to you. Okay. I'll text okay. it and go through that whole series, okay? Okay. Yep. And, and, and let's talk for like tomorrow afternoon because I'll be studying this all morning and afternoon. Well, you know, tomorrow at 3.30 we got class. So okay. I want to try to get with you early so you can, you can come up here with okay. us. Okay. All right? I will. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. All right, man. All right. Peace. Oh, man. Praise y'all. That's, that's where that comes from. Okay, man. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Now, let's do this here. Um. Yeah. I, sorry, y'all, but I had, you know, when people have questions, I was hoping he could have got up here so I could have went through this with him. Okay. Um. Well, we're going to read this and then we'll, um, well, we have to wait till next week, and then tomorrow we're going to have class at 3.30. All right, so you guys need to go to Jubilees Chapter 11. All right, see, this is why I want you guys, that's why I always say, you, you know, it's a lot of reading. You have to read this. You got to read this book. You got to get in this book. You know, and and that's the only way to really. And if you if you if it's something you missing, then you got to try to find somebody that can help you with it. But this is why these classes might be long. And you know, I sometimes I go up there to look at who's looking at what, and I'll be like, you know, they'll they'll, they'll they might have a hundred on the first one, then then the next couple of ones, ten, nineteen. So you know, but that's it's okay that it's like that. But in a way, that's but I know it's most of us that's up there, and that's what I'm really doing. I'm doing a class for everybody that wants to, but. We got to go through all these things because when you you skip over stuff, you miss a lot. It might only be two, two, one, two or three things I say that you had never heard before that might open your eyes to a whole lot of things. So that's why this is so important, and that's why we take our time with this stuff. We we don't. I don't care if it's part forty. That's it's, it's going to be. That's, my teacher said when you told me when I started teaching, make sure that you cover everything, all bases. Whatever you can think of, don't leave nothing out. I don't care how long it takes, because that's the only way that sometimes, you know, we want to make sure that you get everything that you got to get. All right. Now, so the book of Jubilees, chapter 11. Sons of Noah began to war and to shed blood of the men on earth and to eat blood. Now, remember the last couple of weeks ago, we was learning that they remember they was commanded not to do these things. Okay. Now, did you, uh, Mamo, did you have a question? You had something you wanted to add? I'm sorry about that. I was just trying to deal with him. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad you talked about the swaddling clothes. It made sense to me. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Yahoo is now all it's opened up another thing for me because, you, you know, people, I wonder why and not someplace else, but you explain that. So that's good. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, we just grow up looking at him in a manger. They swaddled on him, and they sing these little songs and stuff. But if you don't really understand what's going on and what his role was and why he was born there, then it doesn't make sense. But see, now once you understand that, then you see the greatness of Yahuwah. You see the wisdom of Yahuwah. It's, it's so, it's at it's, it's, the level of his yeah. understanding is just so deep. It's unbelievable. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, Okay. I often wonder why they said, and he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now that explains it. Right. And so that's why I want him to keep coming to class because, you know, it's not, if you just not really, if you just starting this thing or, you know, you, you got to read, you can't, these other books and stuff, they, they'll get you messed up every time. Cause that, that cause you're going by what they say. Yep. Especially, especially if you get in the book, and you don't go back and check behind them. You see what I'm saying? Then you, you know, you, you can't do that because now you're on a whole nother doctrine that ain't even got nothing to do with the book. You see? Yeah. 
but he gonna yeah, get yeah. there. We all we all been there at one time, you know what I'm saying? But the only way you're gonna bring yourself out of that, you have to do research. You can't be lazy with this. Christianity, you can be lazy as you want to. Islam, you can be lazy as you want to. You just it's just a ritual. You go to church on Sunday, you do whatever you want during the week. You know, Islam, they have a few things they do, but most of them you ask them questions about their own book, they don't even know what you're talking about. So this is why I say we gotta be better than that. Now, in the 35th Jubilee, in the third week in the first year, there uh, Ruah uh, took to himself a wife, and her name was Ora, the daughter of Ur, the son of Kassad, and she bare him a son, and he called his name Shiro, in the seventh year of this week in the Jubilees. And the sons of Noah began to war on each other, to take captive and to slay each other, and to shed blood of men on the earth, and to eat blood, and to build strong cities and walls and towers and individuals began to exalt themselves above the nation. So this is where your first king started coming from, after Nimrod, and to found the beginnings of kingdoms, and to go war against, pe uh, against people and nations, against nations, and against cities, and all began to do evil, and to acquire arms, and to teach their sons war, and they began to cap capture cities and sell male and female slaves. So we see this has been going on for a long time, but we started to see that some of them started and exalted themselves over the others. And Ur, the son of Kassad, built the city of Ara of the Chaldees, and called his name after his own name, and the name of his father. And they made for themselves molten images. So they see what this, they started this and they worship each their idol. And the, the molten image which they had made for themselves, and they began to make graven images and unclean sem, sem, uh, semiacra. And malignant spirits assisted and seduced them in committing transgression and uncleanliness. And all that's coming from these. Okay. Right, because when you had these false, these little idols, you know, these these spirits is inside of these idols. And the prince Mastema, we know who that is. That's how Satan exerted himself to do all this. And he set forth other spirits, those which were put under his hand. Remember, we learned that last week that Yah gave him a tenth of the spirits, right, to help him do his wickedness, to do all manner of wrong and sin, and all manner of transgression, to corrupt and destroy, and to shed blood upon the earth. Well, there's reason. So we now we see where all this is coming from. It's coming from Hasatan and his and his little helpers or his little Nephilim spirit children. For this reason, he called the name Saras Sarug, for everyone turned to do all manner of sin and transgression. And he grew up and dwelt in Ur of the Chaldees, near to the father of his wife's mother, and he worshiped idols. And he took to himself a wife in the 36th Jubilee, in the fifth week, in the fifth year thereof. And her name was Melchah, the daughter of Kabar, Kabir, the daughter of his father's brother. And she bare him Nahor in the first year of this week. And he grew and dwelt in Ur of the Chaldees. <clears throat> and his father taught him the researches of the Chaldees to divine and augur. According to the signs of heaven. And in the 37th Jubilee, in the sixth week, in the first year thereof, he took to himself a wife, and her name was, was Laska, the daughter of Nestag of the Chaldees. And she bare him terror in the seventh year of this week. And the prince Mastema sent ravens and birds to devour the seed which was sown in the land in order to destroy the land and rob the children of men of their labor. Before they could plow in the seed, the ravens picked it up from the surface of the ground. And for this reason, he called his name Terah because the ravens and the birds reduced them to destitution and devoured their seed. And the years began to be barren owing to the birds. And they devoured all the fruit of the trees from the trees. Now, Abraham going to help them out with this. It was only with great effort that they could save a little of all the fruit of the earth in their days. And in this 39th Jubilee, in the second week of the first year, Terah took himself a wife, and her name was Edna, the daughter of Abraham, the daughter of his father's sister. So now Abraham is born, uh, our daughter of Abram. And in the seventh year of, the, of this week, she bare him a son and called his name Abram, by the name of the father of his mother, for he had died before his daughter and conceived a son. And the child began to understand the errors of the earth that all went astray after graven images and after uncleanliness. 
That's why I be saying so. When people be saying, you know, that I can eat whatever I want, how can you get uncleanliness been, been a thing of an abomination to Yahuwah way back here? And even Paul told you, no unclean person is going to enter the kingdom. And his father taught him writing, and he was two weeks of years old, and he separated himself from his father that he might not worship idols with him. And he began to pray to the creator of all things that he might save him from the errors of the children of men and that his portion should not fall into error after uncleanliness and vileness. And the seed time came for the sowing of the seed upon the land, and they all went forth to, uh, together to protect their seed against the raven. And Abraham went forth with those that went, and the child was a, a lad of 14 years. And a cloud of ravens came to devour the seed, and Abraham ran to meet them before they settled on the ground, and cried to them before they settled on the ground to devour the seed, and said, they sin not, you came to the place where you came, and they proceeded to turn back. And he caused the clouds of raven to turn back that, that day 70 times. And all the ravens throughout all the land where Abraham, where Abram was there settled, they're not, they're not so much as one. And all who were with him throughout all the land saw him cry out, and all the ravens turned back, and his name became great in all the land of the Chaldees. And there came to him this year all those that wished to sow, and he went with them until the time of sowing ceased, and they sowed their land, and that year they brought enough grain home to eat and were satisfied. And in that first year of the fifth week, Abraham taught those who made implements for oxen, the artificers in wood, and they made a vessel above the ground facing the frame of the plow in order to put the seed thereon. And the seed fell down there from upon the share of the plow and was hidden in the earth, and they no longer feared the ravens. And after this manner, they made vessels above the ground on all the frames of the plows, and they sowed and tilled all the land according to Abram commanded them, and they no longer feared the birds. Okay, so let's go to verse chapter 12. So now we know about this. It came to pass in the sixth week and the seventh year thereof, that Abraham said to Terah his father, saying, Father, he said, Behold, here I am, I am, here am I, my son. And he said, What help and profit have we from those idols which you do worship and before which you do by yourself? For there is no spirit in them, for they are dumb forms and a misleading of heart. Worship them not. Worship Yahuwah, the sovereign ruler of heaven who causes the rain and the dew to descend on the earth and does everything upon the earth and has created everything by his word and all life is from before his face. Why do you worship things that, and did y'all catch that? Yep. Why do you worship things that have no spirit in them? Spirit. They are the work of hands and on your shoulder do you bear them and you have no help from them, but they are a great cause of shame to those who make them and a misleading of the mind to those who worship them. Worship them not. And his father said to him, I also know it. So his father knew this, my son, but what shall I do with the people who have made me to serve before them? So again, we see this man was more afraid of the people than the truth. And we see that right now too, because people, you know, if, oh man, my grandmother, and this is the church my grandmother went to. Okay, but that don't mean you got to go to it. Well, what they going to say, man? She going to be tripping if I... Yeah, we can't do that with Yahoo. And if I tell them the truth, they will slay me. For their soul cleaves to them to worship them and honor them. Keep silent, my son, lest they slay you. And these words he spake to his two brothers, and they were angry with him and kept silent. And in the 40th Jubilee, in the second week, in the seventh year thereof, Abraham took to himself a wife, and her name was Sarai, the daughter of his father, and she became his wife. And Haran, his brother, took to himself a wife in the third year of the third week, and she bare him a son in the seventh year of this week, and he called his name Lot. And Nahor, his brother, took to himself a wife. And in the 60th year of life, of the life of Abram, that is, in the fourth week and the fourth year thereof, <laughs> burned the house of the idols, and he burned all that was in the house, and no man knew it. And they arose in the night and sought to save their elves from the midst of the fire. And Herod hasted to save them, but the fire flamed over them, and he was burnt in the fire, and he died in Ur of the Chaldees before Terah his father, and they buried him in Ur of the Chaldees. 
So, and you got to also think about this. We know Abraham left this place and he crossed over, right? So this is the thing. He was he didn't he was not he, he trusted Yah more than he did anything else. And then his example is that he came out from amongst his own people. He left them. Now, all the stuff that they believe, he left that, and he followed after this. And this is this is what we got to be able to do. And Terah went forth from Ur of the Chaldees, he and his sons, to go into the land of Lebanon and into the land of Canaan. And he dwelt in the land of Haran, and Abraham dwelt with Terah, his father, and Haran two weeks of years. And in the sixth week of the fifth year thereof, Abram sat up throughout the night on the new month, so we know that's a new moon, of the seventh month to observe the stars from the evening to the morning in order to see what would be the character of the year with regard to the rain and he was alone as he sat and observed. So that tells me at one time they was able to do that and tell what their season was gonna be, right? Because he said he gave us the moon for what? Remember one was supposed to rule the day and one was supposed to rule the night, right? And a word came into his heart and he said, all the signs of the stars and the signs of the moon and of the sun are all in the hand of Yahuwah. Why do I search them out? If he desires, he causes it to rain morning and evening. And if he desires, he withholds it and all things are in his hand. See, so that tells me that even though they was supposed to be able to do this, you know, he, he started saying, well, man, listen, this is what I learned from my fathers. Why am I even doing this when I know everything is by Yahuwah's hand? And he prayed that night and said, my sovereign ruler, Yahuwah, most high, you alone are my sovereign ruler. And you and your dominion have I chosen. See, he's telling them right here. He said, now he's making, he's promising them this. And you have created all things and all things that are the work of your hand. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have dominion over the thoughts of the man's hearts. And let them not- Go ahead, lead. come on, I'll help you eat. I'm coming down in a minute. And let them not leave me astray. I need y'all to go on mute because we recording this now. All right, and let them not lead me astray from you, my sovereign ruler, and establish you, me, and my seed forever, that we may, that we go not astray from henceforth and forevermore. And he said, shall I return into Ur of the Chaldees who seek my face that I may return to them? Am I to remain here in this place? The right path before you prosper in the hand of your servant that you may fulfill it and that I may not walk in the deceitfulness of my heart, O Yahuwah, my sovereign ruler. And he made an end of speaking and praying, and behold, the word of Yahuwah was sent to him through me, saying, Get you up from your country and from your kindred and from the house of your father unto the land which I will show you and shall make you a great and numerous nation. So this is that's the biggest part. Most people can't get past. You got to everything else got to be forsaken. Can't put family and friends and none of that ahead of Yahuwah. You just can't do it. And you got to come out from amongst that foolishness. Right. And I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be blessed in the earth and you and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And I will be a sovereign ruler to you and your son and to your son's son and to all your seed. Fear not from henceforth unto all generations for of the earth. I am Yahuwah, your sovereign ruler. And Yahuwah Almighty said, open his mouth and his ears that he may hear and speak with his mouth with the language which has been revealed. For it has ceased from the mouth of all the children of men from the day of the overthrow of Babel. We went through that last week. And I opened his mouth and his ears and his lips and I began to speak with him in what? In Hebrew, in the tongue of the creation. So Hebrew is the tongue of the creation. When people say, oh, man, I ain't got it. I, I speak English. Okay, well, then keep speaking English. And he took the books of his father, and these were written in Hebrew. Huh? And he transcribed them and began from henceforth to study them. See? So I, this, uh, this, this is, that's this, this something that has to be done. And I made known to him that which he could not <laughs> understand. And he studied them during the six rainy months. And this is going to be important when we start to see how this brother was known how to do these sacrifices because he learned these things, right? And it came to pass in the seventh year of the seventh week that he spoke to his father and informed him that he would leave Haran to go into the land of Canaan to see it and return to him. And Terah, his father, said to him, go in peace. 
may the eternal Yahuwah make your path straight. So look at this. So he knew who that was. And Yahuwah be with you and protect you from all evil and grant unto you free unmerited pardon, mercy and favor before those who see you. And may none of the children of men have power over you to harm you. Go in peace. And if you see a land pleasant to your eyes to dwell in it, then arise and take me to you and take Lot with you, the son of Haran, your brother, as your own son. Yahuwah be with you. And Nahor, your brother, leave with me till you return in peace and we go with you all together. Okay, so we got to stop right there. And then we'll just, uh, we'll pick it up next week. Oh, well, uh, y'all know what's going on. I'm going I'm to I'm try to, we're going to try to get this for next week. So let's go ahead and pray real quick. Ab Yahuwah, we come before you as again, Father, thanking you for all things, thanking you for this class. We just pray, pray for Sister Kim, we pray for Renee, we pray for Trey, we pray for Mama, we pray for Noel, we pray for Reese, we pray for uh, Kim's mother and father that, that they be healed. And um, we just we just ask, Father, that you remember little Zoe and um we also, Father, just anybody who, who just comes to our class, Father, just remember them. And then Brother Tracy, help this brother understand with his understanding. Um, I pre I thank you so much for giving me the, the right things, hopefully, to say to help him understand his question. Um, but above all things, Father, we bless your name, we worship the name, and we magnify the name. And Father, we thank you so much. We know without you, we are nothing. So thank you for thinking about us, Father. Thanking you for choosing us before the foundation of the world, because otherwise we couldn't even be up here trying to get this understanding. And we thank you in Yahushua's name. We pray. Hallelujah. All right. So. Hallelujah. All right. Now.